Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. Eat the fucking ocean and bask it! Wow! Trigalaman is a man whose comic proceeds to good. Hey guys, fast forward on it. What are you talking about today, Kevin? Five ways to improve your grailed listings. What is grailed? Something you obviously don't know about. Oh! Like a dad on a fucking a fucking dad. Yeah. <laughs> you look like you're on your first date to oh. second grade. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> you guys <laughs> found your sandals? Cause I'm not. <laughs> Anyways, so today, what's up, guys? Kevin here from Fashion Four Noise. I'm here talking about five ways you can improve your grail listing so your items will sell faster and get that goddamn creep, baby. All right. First things first is product photos. Have decent product photos. I cannot tell you how many times product photo looks like it's fucking taken from a Nokia fucking 2002. Like, low lighting, all of that crap, overexposed, do not do that. I highly suggest at least taking a decently well lit photo, either from your smartphone or from a professional camera, maybe even a DSLR if you do have a DSLR or maybe a mirrorless camera, something like that. In focus shots is extremely important. People can't tell the detail. Like a lot of the items, like you know, like leather, you honestly have to look at the leather and the leather quality and the creasing in the leather for you to tell like whether or not it's decent leather. Like you can immediately tell whether or not something's shit depending on the texture of it. So that's extremely important. For the product photos, make sure to have multiple angles. So that is extremely important. Um, make sure if you are selling, let's say shoes, you get the front, back, you get the sole, make sure there isn't any heel drag, anything like that, you get the anterior, posterior, got that, get, get all that bitch. Oh, oh. Ah, ah, ah. So second is format of the product description. I'm gonna leave in the description down below um, my general format of how I do the product descriptions. I have like a certain format that I put all of my listings at. Um, just a brief overview is that I put the color, I put something about the item description, I put the item quality, such as like a rating I'd give it, maybe 8 out of 10 if it's been worn, or if it's 10 out of 10, I'd be like dead stock with tags, or without tags, etc. Make sure you have adequate product descriptions, like that's extremely important. You can either have it be like a joke, where you can fucking meme on them hoes, or you can honestly have, honestly, like you can probably just go to like a boutique and you can copy and paste. If you get really fucking lazy, you can copy and paste a description from let's say Essence or Foot Lock or anything like that, if you really do get that lazy. What I do is that I offer discounts if you do purchase multiple of my items at once. Um, I usually do like if you purchase two or more items, I give you a certain percentage off, etc. on the entire purchase. Bonus is if you actually add dimensions to your product listings. Because someone down the line, if you are selling some garments, they are going to ask for dimensions and you might as well just put it up ahead of time um, instead of getting a message like three months down the line that they want like dimensions and then you got to pull it out of your box or pull it out of like the deep depths of your fucking uh, closet to just get that, get that. Uh, that nice tape measure and lay it on me, daddy. Number three is setting the correct price. So I've actually set up three different, I guess, tiers that I've made for different types of items. So here it is. I have it written down. Um, I'm, I'm professional, I swear. You talking shit, Chris? You want to fuck? Mm, you can't go home now, boy. I hate it here. No, you don't hate it here. If you hate it here, you get the belt. <laughs> no. I'm getting the belt, motherfucker. So, the three different types is a long term item. So, I estimate it'll be sold around one to two months after its initial um, product uploading. Uh, you do not have an offer. You have a decent price where it's not extremely expensive, nor is it extremely cheap. Um, I'd say, and decent shipping. So, a lot. <laughs> Make sure you bottle those tears up and we'll sell them. Yes, 
So I have long-term items. So basically on Grail, you can set your own shipping rates. So you can set it to 30 bucks, 50 bucks, just honestly anything. So for the long-term listings, it has no offer, decent price and decent shipping. For short-term items, I believe it'll take about a month to a month and a half. Um, offers are open, higher slash inflated price, and three is inflated shipping. So you're trying to compensate for your quick sale because you are probably gonna try to sell this only through offers. Um, and in the case that somebody does buy your bin, which is buy it now, um, they will be paying, I guess, a little bit of an extra just really quick because I've actually had some items sell that I didn't think would sell at the bin um, even though I had offers open and the shipping was a little bit inflated so stuff like that like you can wake up one more and be like wow the supreme mama sold and my last one is a steel item sometimes these take around two weeks to sell uh, at least in my case in my case I'll be closed offer steel price and inflated shipping. So why the shipping is inflated is that you try to compensate for whatever steel you're providing, but you really gotta provide a steel price. And how I suggest um, you guys like setting your prices is that you should look at the previously sold, you should look at all of the listings that you had prior or that was on grill prior and were sold. I'd say take into the fact that one, how old the listing is, because items do inflate in price depending on the item. Uh, two, you should probably take an average of the item ranges. And three, for you to do an inflated price, I'd say 10 to 20% inflated. And if you want to offer a steel price, probably offer like 20 to 30% lower than whatever the average is. If you guys do want to get into all of this shit. Four is item name. So that is extremely important. Make sure that you have the correct item name and that you have the specific model or the specific version of it. So like for example, uh, let's take uh, a Jordan 5 for example. So black Jordan 5, you know, just a basic ass title, like people aren't really gonna know what it is. Or you can say black metallic Jordan 5 2001 or 2000, um, 16 or something like that. Then uh, people who are specifically looking for that black metallic 2016 or 2001 pair can find it quicker, more efficiently, and um, the Grail search engine, like basically if it doesn't match those parameters, it'll be moved to the bottom. So if you type in Jordan 5 black metallic, it'll show up everything with the Jordan 5 black metallic, and then it'll put your Jordan 5 listing all the way at the end after the last Jordan 5 black metallic listing. So it's better and it gives you more exposure and I just think it's a quicker way for you to get your items sold. A bonus if you actually know which season your item was from, I guess this is more towards higher designer brands. So you can say, um, for example, this is terrible, but um, like Yeezy season two, Yeezy season three, or John Elliott season seven versus John Elliott season nine, or fall, winter 17, or spring, summer 15, something like that. So putting that in your item listing and in your product description is extremely helpful. Five, the very last thing to make your bitch ass item sell, make you some good ass money, is make sure you put it in the right category. As stupid as it sounds, this is extremely important. So, uh, like what I mean by that is you wouldn't want to put something made by, for example, like Mason Margiela, or you wouldn't want to put something by Dior in the hype section or the basic section because that wouldn't be the correct category. For vintage, ugh, for vintage items, yes, I'd put it in basic. For Supreme, Palace, Bait, hype brands like that, I'd put it in height. And for more elegant, I guess, if you want to do like Rick Owens, um, John Elliott, um, there are, uh, I guess, Fear of God could really work in between. See, like some of these, you have to take the liberty and see because you would honestly see hype. You would go to the hype section if you are willing to play, play, to pay an inflated price from the retail value. Grail, you usually find more steals. Hype, you usually find more limited items and more hyped items. So make sure you put the correct listing because you wouldn't want to put, let's say, um, you wouldn't want to put a Mason Margiela jacket that is from uh, 
O2 or something like that. You, you wouldn't want to put that in basics or you wouldn't want to put that in height. I feel like it'll get the most traction and it'll uh, garner the better, I guess, audience for the product if it's on grail. So use your own discretion, but take that into account. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I have more stuff coming soon. Midterms are coming soon, so this might be, um, I might skip a week. I probably won't. Just follow my Instagram at kevin.img. Uh, check down below for my grail. I uploaded a bunch of new items, uh, such as Nike Air Yeezy 2s and my Footscape Magistas, if you guys are looking for any of those. So definitely. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.